The very first motorboats were built on this lake, Lago Iseo, 100 years ago. And in the course of those years, the lake has kept something unique, precious and rare. Being able to design any boat so it looks handmade by a craftsman, even a big yacht. In the boat world, anything up to 80 feet usually means something industrially produced, but there are still some who lovingly produce by hand. The Sarnico Boatyard. This is the latest version of the Sarnico 60, the GTV model. Looking at it closely, you'll see why an owner, instead of buying an industrially made model, which would definitely be cheaper, would prefer one by Sarnico. The 60-footer comes in different versions, but all of them have the NAND trademark and fascinating coupe style designed by Nuvari and Leonard. Researching living habits correlate to the beautiful shape. The cockpit, for example, is an innovative study in exterior spaces. This particular setup is unusual in a boat of this size, but it's very comfortable and safe. It's a sporty boat and fast, so it needs a protected living area which is outside though. They've succeeded here, as it even has a very large sliding roof that covers the driver's seat going right from the windscreen, which makes for pleasant driving out in the open. The amazing thing for me is the craftsmanship. These shapes and details are all the result of experts' hands, quality that you just don't get on a mass-produced boat. The height and width of the boat has created a light and airy atmosphere. The internal areas in this particular one are interesting. I think we can happily say that the owner is looking to spend as much time on the boat, but can't give up his business. So here's the answer. Instead of a big cabin, there's a studio where they can work or host guests. Honestly, I find this lifestyle quite intriguing. Working from the boat doesn't mean you're distancing yourself from work. Exactly the opposite. It means you are always on holiday when you are working. Sun, swimming, sailing, and then resting in a wonderful suite. Large storage spaces and wardrobes mean you can have your choice of clothes. It is more private than usual because the cabin is at the stern, completely detached from the owner's quarters. The furnishings are predominantly oak and maple, which warm the place up and make it lighter. To be able to stay on board for as long as you want and be completely independent, well, there's a fully fitted out kitchen on the lower bridge. The true value of the Sarnico boats isn't just in what's here, in what you see. I have looked at all the models and I have to say that they're all very interesting and have interesting navigational characteristics. But this new 60, I think we need to try it out. These boats know how to cut through the waves perfectly. It's just a shame there aren't any right now because they skim across so nicely, even when they're quite high. The boat geometry changes continually from one section to another and at the stern. The dead rise is much reduced, so it's lovely to go fast on the water. Sixty feet, two thousand horsepower, twenty-three tons. What sort of speed are we thinking? Thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six knots max, or average, or maybe more. We 
Let's go through it then. We've got two man 1,000 horsepower engines. They're V8 common railers. They cruise quickly, 13 knots, 1,000 revs. After having done a few calculations, I can say that this is the most economical speed, 15 knots, 1,100 revs, and just getting to 40 litres per engine. I really like how it gradually builds up speed. As soon as you accelerate, it goes faster without changing gear. If we want to sail super comfortably and admire the view, this is the right speed, 25 knots. Can you hear how quiet it is? What does the sound meter say? 57 dBA with the top open, incredible. On this boat, the engines are in the middle. In the machine room, you'll find the reservoirs, the group of Mace Electrics, the Mace battery charger and all the other machinery. This means that the boat is heaviest at the centre of the boat. And it's because of this that all the boat movement, the pitch, drift and roll are minimal, because the barry centre is in the right place and very low too. From 1,300 revs up to 2,100, these man engines have a coupled curve, which is practically constant. This means guaranteed efficient push, and it's pretty efficient, whatever the turnover. You need to watch when you're giving it gas with this pedal, as the reaction can be unexpected. The propellers need to be relatively long, and the speed climbs very quickly. I reckon these engines can quite easily hold 2,100 revs a minute. Cruising speed is this, 34 knots, very high, but what the max? Impressive. Contagiri sale come se fosse un motore fuori bordo. The rev counter is rising like it's an outboard, which means the boat isn't resisting much. We're doing 2,375, 2,380 revs a minute and the GPS is showing 38.5 knots. It seems quite unbelievable, but all the Sonico boats are super fast and all of them reach and go over 40 knots, even this new 60 GTV. And this is the secret of this boat. Look at the wake. They say that the boat slides across the water perfectly, and that's the reason it goes so quickly with such a superior result. Way above average for boats like it. It captures the spirit of the Sarnico boatyard, which is to create comfortable but fast boats, and then they have this ability to build everything very big, made to measure. Starting from a basic standard, they can modify not just the interior layout, but outside too, like this GTV. And all done so impeccably, to satisfy even the most demanding of clients. So as well as the aesthetics, the finishings and all the stuff we always like to look at, there's something much more important to weigh up here. The quality of the sailing experience. And I have to say that this Sarnico 60 has been rather good.